I grew up in New Zealand, but when I was 14 I moved over to Scotland with my family, and we live here in my village of Glenelg. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a remote <laughs> area, so it's quite different from, I suppose, most other people at the college. But I think that's what makes it quite unique, my experience, at least in comparison with others. My name is Mercedes McCambridge. I study Japanese studies at the University of Cambridge as part of St. John's College, and I'm 19 years old. Admittedly, my name is rather strange, Mercedes McCambridge, but it's actually because my father was very interested in horror movies, and his, his last name was McCambridge, obviously. And so one of the actresses in the Exorcist movie, where the voice of the possessed girl, is called Mercedes McCambridge and so he'd always wanted a daughter called Mercedes McCambridge and here I am. <laughs> Glenelg's a very small village but it has a very strong sense of community. For example we all usually congregate either at the local inn and all the friends you make here usually are friends for life. The area is very diverse, it has all sorts of different landscapes from what you can see here to other beaches and shoals and all sorts of forests which are around the area. It's very picturesque and I'm very blessed to be here actually. I first started thinking about university when I took my first year of exams. So here in Scotland they're called National Fives but in the English equivalent probably be GCSEs. So naturally you start considering what your future is going to be like but honestly I didn't expect that I would ever end up in Cambridge. It was my French teacher who pushed me towards Cambridge in particular. I had no idea what to expect or that I'd even get in, but she pushed me towards a small summer school program run by the Sutton Trust for modern medieval languages. And uh, after that experience, I just was set on Cambridge. We visited St. John's very briefly for a formal dinner, and I was simply blown away by the beauty of the architecture. I thought at first I'd probably stick out coming from my background, but it was not the case at all. Even in a most like traditional college, I felt so welcomed by all the staff and all the students already. Geographically, Cambridge is quite far from where I live in the northwest coast of Scotland, but also tuition is free in Scotland for higher education. That isn't the case in England at the moment, which meant I would definitely be facing a financial barrier when I look to going to Cambridge. My mum's a single mum, but she also is self-employed. She works as a seamstress for her own small business, which she runs here in, in this village. But I have three other brothers, which means that our financial circumstances are rather difficult at times. This led me to believe that perhaps going to Cambridge would be a selfish decision. In order to put all this financial burden on my family, I'd have to have just reason for it. And I wasn't too sure if risking it all to go to a university already with so many barriers, that whether that would be a sort of good decision to make or not. St. John's rolled out a new studentship scheme, which essentially covers all of your living costs for low-income families. This was a massive relief for my family, which we had already been stressing quite a lot about how we would cover all of the costs, tuition as well as my living costs. So by slicing that worry in half, it immensely relieved my family. At first I was surprised by how diverse St. John's College is. There's so many different students from all sorts of backgrounds, as well as different countries from all over the world. Despite this incredible diversity, everyone is so welcoming and so friendly and open-minded towards taking in other students from all sorts of different backgrounds and making them feel at home. So I'm studying Japanese studies which encapsulates both the language aspect of Japan as well as the cultural, historical, political elements of the, of the subject. Growing up in New Zealand I had quite a number of Asian friends like Chinese American friends, Japanese, Korean. Naturally they all got me involved in the culture and especially the manga and anime which I had growing up that sort of inspired me to take an interest in the language itself. 
So to study Japanese at Cambridge, it's not actually required for you to know much Japanese at all before you start the course. I only had the very basic level of Japanese, and for my advanced hires, which are A-level equivalent, I studied chemistry, English, and French. But what I do think you need is a flexible and an open mind, a very strong work ethic, but also a passion for language that will get you through the tough parts of the course. On a cultural level, you're having to navigate a completely different way of thinking, but also on a linguistic level, you're having to cope with a different grammar structure, word order, and also a completely different writing system than your native tongue. So adapting to that is quite a challenge. My college in particular, St. John's, uh, rolled out a new travel bursary scheme over the summer. This in particular allowed me to go to Japan for the very first time and experience true Japanese life. I stayed with a host family and I studied at a language school, but also they have a partnership with Nagoya University and they run a student uh, exchange, which I was lucky enough also to take part in. So this whole experience really enhanced everything I thought about Japan and gave me the chance to finally practice the Japanese that I'd been studying all year. I haven't yet decided what I want to do exactly for my future yet, but I know that I'm very interested in areas of political science. Also, naturally being interested in different languages makes me interested in different cultures, so perhaps diplomacy or working in the foreign office would be the best fit for me.